Salutations and happy spring to everybody. So, since it is a new season, we are uh, one season closer to Halloween season again. You know, my favorite time of the year. But, um, since we're starting spring, I figured we could start off with a, um, pretty big deal of a haunted location, the Trans-Allegheny Asylum in West Virginia. Constructed between 1858 and 1881 in Weston, the site was originally named Weston State Hospital. It was designed by Richard Andrews to be therapeutic with open windows for sunlight and fresh air for its 250 patient capacity. Now, we all know that those plans got flushed down the toilet with how things run with cursed, haunted hospitals and asylums from any horror movie that we've seen about ghosts now, huh? So, the Weston State Hospital complex was built to be entirely self-sustaining. On grounds, they had their own farm, dairy production, medical services, even its own cemetery. However, in 1881, an influx of patients led to overcrowding by more than 500 residents. This led to a stress on the farm and dairy production, causing malnutrition, which made things worse. Wait, wait, what's that? Oh, yes, thank you, indeed. Uh, math just came in, 750 is bigger than 300, which was the maximum amount the farmlands and dairy production could handle, so it definitely could not sustain. Later on, gruesome things such as lobotomies were said to have been done on the property, even to healthy patients from experimental lobotomist Walter Freeman. At its peak in the 1950s, the asylum housed almost 10 times their capacity, with approximately 2,400 patients within the confines of the complex. Due to this, the place was incredibly overcrowded, as I'm sure one could imagine, as well as uh, had terrible living conditions. Only way, I guess, to really make this any worse would be to have around the clock Brady Bunch on the television, right? Now, it wasn't until 1994 that this place came to close because of their treatments for mental illness as well as a deteriorating building. So, this, however, had de devastating effects on the local economy for the state. I wouldn't understand how the two tie together, but, you know, things happen. Nowadays, it's open for um, ghost hunting teams and is essentially a tourist trap. Um, Ghost hunting teams have explored the grounds and there have been apparition sightings, strange noises, and other paranormal events that occur. Thousands of souls had been committed to the asylum over the years, and hundreds have perished within the walls. Workers there claim that there are still a handful of resident patients that linger around. They must stick around for the continental breakfast, or maybe the remnants of time past that memory serves as conduit with discarded medical equipment, furniture, and tokens from previous residents that still line the rooms in this modern-day tourist attraction. Now, I definitely know that I would, but would you go to the Trans-Allegheny Asylum and take the tours that they have there on a regular basis?